Hello students. So let us continue with the back exercise of chapter 10 gravitation. Now we'll be doing the 14th question first. A stone is released from the top of a tower of height 19.6 meters. Calculate its final velocity just before touching the ground. So we'll now write what is given. A stone is released from the top of a tower of height 19.6 meter. H, height H is 19.6 meters. Calculate its final velocity just before touching the ground. So if we have a look at this diagram, let O be the top of the tower from where the stone has been released. So at this point when it is released, it means it is dropped. So U is 0 meter per second. So when the word released or dropped is written, we can write U as 0 meter per second. We know it is a case of freely falling stone. So small g acceleration due to gravity will be taken as positive 9.8 meter per second square. As when it is falling downwards, it is positive acceleration. You have to find the velocity just before touching the ground. You have to find its velocity just before touching the ground. It means final velocity v you have to find out. Now look at the given things. They, everything is in the proper system of units, SI units. We have to find v. T is not given. So we can use the third equation of motion. v square is u square plus 2gh. Put the values of v, u and g. Take care g is positive and take care this is square. This is 0 square. 0 square will be 0 only. So v square is 19.6 into 19.6. So we can take the square root of this to get v and the final velocity that we get is 19.6 meter per second. I hope this is clear to you. 15th question. A stone is thrown vertically upward with an initial velocity of 40 meter per second. Taking small g is equal to 10 meter per second square, find the maximum height reached by the stone, what is the net displacement and the total distance covered by the stone. So I'll read the question and we'll write what is given here again. So 15th question given is a stone is thrown vertically upward. So a stone is thrown vertically upward with an initial velocity of 40 meter per second. So you write given small u initial velocity is 40 meter per second. Taking g is 10 meter per second square. g is acceleration due to gravity and when the throne is thrown in the vertically upward direction small g should be taken as negative minus 10 meter per second square. So if you don't put the negative sign, your sum will go wrong. Find the maximum height reached. Small h you have to find out. Height reached h. What is the net displacement and the total distance covered by the stone? Now in this case, stone is thrown. Let a be the initial position of the stone. And here u is initial velocity is 40 meter per second. Let us say O is it the maximum height reached. O A is the maximum height reached. So at O, V, that is final velocity for this motion from A to O will be 0 meter per second. So I have written there V is 0 meter per second. Now to find H, again we can use the third equation of motion as we have done in the previous example because T is not mentioned. So V square is U square plus 2 G H but Take care, in this case g is negative. So after putting the values, when we do the calculations, we get h is 80 meters. So height we have got. Net displacement you have to find. Now we know that when the throne, stone is thrown from A, it will go up. And after covering the maximum height, it again falls back down along the same path and reach the same position. So as the initial and final position are same, net displacement is 0 meters because you know what is displacement. Displacement is the shortest distance 
from the initial position to the final position. So if initial and final positions are both same, that is point A, then net displacement is 0 meters. Total distance covered by the stone. Total distance covered will be now from A to OH and again when it comes back from O to A, again H height. So total distance covered will be H plus H, that is 2H. Just put the value of H, 2 into 80, so it is 160 meters. Hope it is clear to you. Sixteenth question is, calculate the force of gravitation between the earth and the sun. Given that the mass of the earth is 6 into 10 raised to 24 kg and of the sun is 2 into 10 raised to 30 kg. The average distance between the two is 1.5 into 10 raised to 11 meters. So right now, give 16 given, mass, calculate the force of gravitation between the earth and the sun given that mass of the earth, so capital N E is given as 6 into 10 raised to 24 kg. Mass of the sun is given as 2 into 10 raised to 30 kg. Average distance between them, we will denote it by small r is given as 1.5 into 10 raised to 11 meters. You have to find the gravitational force of attraction between them. Let us, we always denote it by capital F. We know that for, for finding F, we have to use the Newton's universal law of gravitation. So we should know cap, the value of capital G. And even if it is not given, we can remember, it is approximately 6.7 into 10 raised to minus 11 Newton meter square per kg square. Now, there is no problem of conversion. Everything is in the SI unit. So, F is equal to G M E M S upon R square. This is according to Newton's universal law of gravitation. We will put the values of G, M E, M S and R. And after putting the values, we can write those uh, 10, uh, 10 raised to minus 11, 10 raised to 24, 10 raised to 30 in the numerator. And in the denominator, be careful, it is R square. So when you square it, you will get 10 raised to 22. So we can take minus 11 plus 24 plus 30 minus 22, the power of 10 in the numerator. And we can do the rest calculation. So answer comes out to be 35.73 into 10 raised to 21. So let us write in the scientific way. 3.573 into 10 raised to 22. Round it off to two decimal places. So 3.57 into 10 raised to 22 Newton will be the required answer. Seventeenth question now. Listen to the question carefully. A stone is allowed to fall from the top of a tower 100 meter high. And at the same time, another stone is projected vertically upwards from the ground with a velocity of 25 meter per second. Calculate when and where the two stones will meet. So I'll read it again. Listen to the question carefully and you should write or you should draw the rough diagram and write what is given, what you have to find out. A stone is allowed to fall from the top of a tower 100 meter high. So I have drawn a diagram here. So let A be the position from where the stone is allowed to fall. So A be the top of a tower from where the stone is allowed to fall. And it is 100 meter high. So OA, if O is a point on the ground, then OA is 100 meter. Okay. And at the same time, another stone is projected vertically upwards. So I have given this stone which is actually dropped from the top of a tower. I have named it as or numbered it as stone 1. And this stone which is thrown in the vertically upward direction from the ground at the same time when this stone 1 is released, I have numbered it as stone 2. So there are two stones in this question. And both of them are allowed to have motion at the same time, along the same direction. Uh, see, path is OA. This U will be dropped from A at the same time. The stone 1 will be dropped from A. And another stone 2 will be thrown in the vertically upward direction from O. 
So this line is straight. They are thrown in the same direction. This is allowed to fall and this is thrown in the same direction. Remember that. So now the question is, this is stone is thrown with some velocity and the velocity is given as 25 meter per second. And as stone 1 is released or dropped, so for stone 1, the initial velocity will be 0 meter per second. Now, if they are moving, you know, same straight path is there. They are moving in the opposite direction. So, obviously, after some time, they will meet. Question is, you have to find when and where will the two stones meet. Okay. So, given for stone 1, u is 0 meter per second. For stone 2, u is 25 meter per second. Just draw the diagram and on the diagram itself show which is stone 1 and which is stone 2. So now what I have written here, when and where the two stones will make, meet that you have to find out. Let us say, let the two stones meet at point B, at point B, which is a distance x from ground, that is point O. So if B is this I have shown here, the distance of B is x from the ground or point O. Let us assume that the two stones meet at point B. So what will be B O x? What will be length B A? 100 minus x because the entire length A O or entire height of the tower is 100 meters. Let us say the two stones meet at point B which is a distance x from ground after time t. So what we have to find when and where the two stones will meet. When means we have to find the time t and where means we have to find the x, distance x from the ground. Once we get x and t, we have solved the sum. Now let us do the, let us do the sum first for stone 1. For stone 1, u is 0 meter per second. Let us consider its motion from A to B. So u is 0 meter per second and what is the height covered or distance covered? 100 minus x meters and small g as it is a case of positive acceleration when it is freely falling in the downward direction. So small g will be positive 9.8 meter per second square. Now in this case use the, using the second equation of motion for freely falling body we can write h is ut plus half gt square. Put the value of, put the values of h that is 100 minus x is equal to ut, u is 0 into t plus half into 9.8 t square. So 100 minus x will be 0 into t will be 0. So 100 minus x will be 4.9 into t square. So we can write x is equal to 100 minus 4.9 t square. Number this equation as 1. Now let us solve for stone 2. Let us try to get the value of x from the things from the things given in for stone 2. Now what is given for stone 2? For stone 2, u is 25 meter per second when we cover when we consider its motion from O to B. U is 25 meter per second. What is the distance or height covered? That is OB, which is x. So h is x meters. Small g will be negative now because when the throw, stone is thrown in the vertically upward direction, it is a case of uniform retardation. So small g we should take 9.8 but minus 9.8 meter per second square. If you don't put the negative sign, entire sum will go wrong. So again use the second equation of motion for stone 2 now. H is ut plus half gt square. What will be h for it? x we have written x meters x is equal to u is 25 so 25 t plus half g is minus 9.8 into t square so we get x is 25 t minus 4.9 t square number this as 2 okay so using the second equation of motion for stone 1 and stone 2 we are able to get two equations for x in the first, x is 100 minus 4.9 t square. In the second equation, x is 25 t minus 4.9 t square. Now we know that both these x 
they mean the same distance so we can compare them and compare their right hand side to get the value of t let us see how so now comparing one and two equations we get 25t minus 4.9t square is 100 minus 4.9t square so 4.9t square from both the sides it will get cancelled so we are left with 25t is 100 so t is 100 by 25 that is 4 seconds so time is 4 seconds now we can put this value of t in either first equation or second equation of motion to get the value of x so here I am putting t is equal to 4 seconds in equation 1 which is x is 100 minus 4.9t square so put the value of t as 4 and after simplification we get x is 21.6 meters. So the question was when and where the two stones will meet. So we can write the two stones will meet at distance 21.6 meter above the ground after 4 seconds. So here the other sums were comparatively easier so here you have to actually have you have two stones in the same numerical so you have to use a two equa uh, two equations of motion separately for the for both the stones to get the answer okay so be careful when you do such numerical just read the question properly and try to understand the question properly once you understand the question properly the sum is very easy Now the last question of this pack exercise for gravitation part. 18th question. A ball thrown up vertically returns to the thrower after 6 seconds. Find A. The velocity with which it was thrown up. B. The maximum height it reaches. And C. Its position after 4 seconds. A ball is thrown up vertically it returns to the thrower after 6 seconds. So if O is a position from where the thrower has thrown the ball, let us say ball reaches the maximum height, maximum uh, peak position A and again it falls down and it comes into the hands of the thrower. So a ball thrown up vertically returns to the thrower after 6 seconds and the ball takes 6 seconds to reach here again. Find the velocity with which it was thrown up. It means you at this point you have to find out. Initial velocity. The maximum height it reaches OA which will be represented by small h and its position after 4 seconds. Now so I have, what I have written here is you should remember when any object is thrown in air and it is moving only under the influence of gravity. Time for which it remains in air is called as time of flight. Okay. So time of flight that is time taken by the ball or stone to reach from O to A and again back to O again to the thrower is 6 seconds will represent it by capital T. Time of ascent is equal to time of descent. Now in this case from here only the ball was thrown and the ball again uh, reaches into the hands of the thrower. So in this case time of ascent which is time taken by the ball to reach from O to A will be equal to time of descent that is time taken by the ball to reach from A to O. So if we represent that time of ascent or time of descent by small t that will be equal to capital T divided by 2 which is 6 by 2 is 3 seconds. So even if you don't use this language time of flight, time of ascent, time of descent you can directly write that time taken by the ball to reach the maximum height or peak position is equal to total time divided by 2 that is 6 divided by 2 is 3 seconds. I have just introduced these terms so that when you listen these terms, you don't uh, you are uh, you don't feel that you don't know what are they. You should be familiar with these terms. Even if you don't use these terms in the numericals, it will be okay. So what you have to find out initial velocity u with which the ball was thrown, second maximum height reached, 
third its position after four seconds. Now you know that after three seconds it reaches at point A and after four seconds means in the next one second where it will be you have to find out after reaching A then after one second where it will be because then the total time will be four seconds. Now for this consider the motion from O to A first it means Consider the motion when it is thrown from by the thrower and then it reaches a maximum height. So for this motion at A, V is equal to 0 meter per second. Small g is minus 9.8 meter per second square. You know it is uniform retardation. Small t as we have taken, uh, calculated it is 3 seconds. So using the first equation of motion for a freely falling body, V is u plus gt we can easily find the value of u that comes out to be 29.4 meter per second. So first part we have done. The numerical was easy. Only the thing was here time was not given directly. Total time was given and you have to divide it by 2 in order to get this time when it takes uh, to reach from O to A. Now, for height, we can use the third equation of motion. Okay, I am not preferring second equation of motion because h is ut plus half gt square I prefer whenever u is 0. But in this case, u is not 0, v is 0. So, I prefer the third equation of motion. v square is u square plus 2gh. Just put the value of v as 0. u we have just found 29.4 square is then put the value of g as minus 9.8 we can calculate and get the value of h to be equal to 44.1 meter so it is a maximum height reached by the ball so we have found the second also now third is its position after four seconds now we know that the ball takes three seconds to reach from o to a so after four seconds means after reaching A, then one second after this, what is its position? What is its position? You have to find out. So consider the motion from A towards O or A to O. Let time t is equal to one second. Why I have taken one second? You know because we want to know its position after four seconds and three seconds it has already taken to reach at A. So after one second, what is its position? We want to note it down after it reaches A. Then we'll get the position after four seconds. So let small t is one second. We know at A, u is zero meter per second. And in this case, small g will be plus 9.8 meter per second square. So now here, you can use the second equation of motion. H is ut plus half gt square. So you can... As u is 0, so this will be quite easier for you as this term will get cancelled. And so half gt square will be left. Put the value of g as 9.8 and t as 1. So you get h is 4.9 meters. h is what? h is a distance travelled from a in the downward direction. So somewhere here. So you can write position after 4 seconds is 4.9 meter below the peak position. Or we can write total height covered above the thrower is 44.1 meter as we have calculated. Or you can subtract this 4.9 from 44.1 and you get 39.2 meters above the thrower. So you can write position after 4 seconds is either 4.9 meter below the peak position or you can write 44.1 minus 4.9 that is 39.2 meters above the thrower. So this chapter was quite very easy chapter and the back exercise was also very easy. On the only 17th and 18th some were a bit complicated. Okay. So you need to practice a numerical, revise all the videos. You should be thorough with the concepts and do the back exercise and in text question. So with this the chapter is over. Thank you students.